What's up guys, Nightingale here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be taking you through my daily routine real quick. Now, um, this will depend a little bit upon where you're at in the game, but you know, a lot of players ask me, what do I do? How do, how do we go about after we start playing? So, um, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to show you a little bit about what I do as soon as I start the game. So it has been reset about two hours ago. I haven't been in the game yet. So let's go in and start my daily routine. Uh, you can actually do this quite fast. Um, I'm not going to physically engage and do everything here, but I will walk you through the general process. Now I have the um, 499 pack for the um, daily uh, gems, so I get that. Um, I find it worth, but uh, some of you can't afford that, don't have the ability to get that. It's fine, this is just what I do, and um, it's my way of supporting the game a little bit, you know, each month. So, right now we have a daily check-in, so obviously we'll claim the uh, daily check-in, and we're off. So, once we reach here, the first thing I normally do is come over to my friends list and send and receive all. Uh, this way, everybody's getting their uh, friendship points. This is very important. Make sure you go through and search and find 30 friends, even though you may have friends that you're going to want to add. It's okay. Kick those people once you get. It's more important that you max out your friends so that you have consistent friendship points coming in. And if it feels like you're not getting any, try to kick out the lower end accounts as often because they may not be coming here to do that. Because the higher end players will realize that they want friendship points. So we go there. The next step I go, depending on where I'm at, is either the mail or my outpost, but I'm gonna come here and claim my daily arena defense. Now, you may not have this just yet because you might not be in PVP, but I always come to my mailbox and check that out next. Then, because it's important for me that I do not have this on backup, I go ahead and I claim my um, daily reward or my hourly rewards because this is an idle game and this is where it comes from all right here this is what it's all about is the currency there now we have the daily wipeout i'm going to go ahead and do that so there is my one daily wipeout for free um if you start getting into liberations only do this once occasionally you'll find one that says do it twice i just go ahead and do it because you've already rolled the gems for it if that's probably the case you might as well just finish this off all right, then we come up to the cash shop real quick and we will grab the daily, monthly, weekly, depending on the day, month of the of the year. Right now it's the daily for me, but you'd come here, grab the weekly and grab the monthly as well for your extra gems. So do make sure you do that. If you're wanting to know where I got the 30 day supply from, it's this right here. If you are a giga whale and, w and are planning on spending some decent money on the game, this is kind of worth, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not spending an extra $15 a month on this, no. $4.99, sure. Outside that, your mileage will vary. Now uh, we've done the actual cash shop, now comes into the Welcome refresh the shop here. Uh, there is actually two refreshes here to take. So um, we go ahead and I get our core dust. Core dust Hope is very important to, to us, especially later on in the game. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that there is actually a free reset here at a certain point. I think this is all the way in the game, but I do know that I have the free reset. So I get to reset the shop. Um, I need to check this on a newer account. Um, and we get core dust again. Great. Thank I appreciate you. those. Uh, and I will buy this just in case. Because um, it is a pretty decent deal for that. Now that we're done with that, uh, for a newer player, you might want to come down here and check a Take couple other things. Take as much time as so, you like. Next up is the body label shop. This is important. Do not, and I mean try to really not buy this stuff. Now, I've come in here and popped five molds every now and then, but I've also got a pretty decent stash of 38,000 stored up. Uh, I'm in no rush. Now, I should be actually using these I'm to sure probably balance out uh, my pilgrim purchase. over time <laughs> and come in and buy 4,000 here, 4,000 there. I should probably be doing that, but we'll, we'll get to that later. But try to avoid this because this is expensive. I will say for the early players, do buy some of the re-energy, but as you start getting into that near 200 stage, you probably are earning this enough that you're going to be level locked well before you'll end up spending it. But later on, you can come back into buying it. It depends on how much you're getting. That's really what it comes to. How much are you summoning? Have Next up is going to be the rupee shop. Um, 
This one, I have a unique method. I won't say this is the best way, the worst way, or the way you should do it, but here's how I look at this. I try to spool this, my currency up to around 100,000 and then I buy everything. Now, this doesn't make sense to some people. They're like, you need to constantly be buying, but here's how I do this. I look at what I'm short on. So right now I am short on the uh, green ones. It's not to a thousand and I call a thousand being short because you can burn 200 in one click. So I will buy this today, but because my electric code is low, I'm gonna buy this. So we're gonna go ahead and get those. But this is over one, this is over 1100. I'm gonna skip this and I will buy the chest today. Um, so I will let this uh, fluctuate back and forth in currency. It is a weekly currency, you can get some. But for me personally, um, I try to build up to a thousand and then uh, I'll do big burns. So once I hit 100,000 of the tickets, I will buy everything out. Um, I'm just not earning enough to constantly buy everything. Hello. Now, this is, the this is something you have to watch a little bit, depending on where you are in the game. And that comes down to your black ticket numbers here. I will give you the advice real quick here of, just remember, these do not buy, black tickets do not buy units. You can notice a very distinct difference. Look at all the black ticket units. Look at the gold ticket units. They actually show the unit's physical photo above me. These are their body parts. Meaning, if you buy that Emma body part, you're only gonna get an Emma body part. You're not gonna get Emma. I have seen new players do this. Do not do this, and but do keep an eye on the shop. This is, this is random, but fixed at the same time. There's only a certain amount of units. The only pilgrim that will show up in here is Noah. Each one has its own unique group, and there will be some that you'll probably want to focus down over time. For me, I'm going to be using this shop to probably buy my litter dupes, which is she's right there. And um, I'll be using my black tickets to work on her as I progress up. Um, I might start saving them just in case I get Noah because it would help me dupe Noah for whatever reason, the pilgrim to uh, burst too. Then down here in the recycling shop, this is once you start getting into co-op raids, you'll be earning this currency. Where I'm at in the game, I only buy the boxes and the core dust and screw the tickets. Honestly, I'll get all my units to friendship 30, friendship 10, friendship whatever, um, as it goes along. So that is the shop in a nutshell. Um, there is the gems in there, so you do want to take care of that. Now that I've done that, now it's going to go into a couple different things. If I'm playing on stream, I... Uh, have a different way of playing, but if I'm going to be playing it like I am today, I'm going to go in and do this real quick. So we're not going to go through and do everything because I don't want this video to be 50 minutes long. I'm just trying to show you what you kind of need to do. So right now we have a very unique experience that we actually have two side stories running. You're not going to have this all the time, I promise. Um, but in gotcha. this case, we come here and we make sure that we do our daily pulls here. So we're going to go down here. The best advice I can give you guys, please do the core dust ones. Um, I know you're going to be tempted to do battle data. Do battle data um, a little bit, but core dust, I, I promise you, I'm going to get into this later. We're going to talk about that at a much later date, or at a later date, about why getting the uh, core dust is so important here. So I've got 100% because I've got the two units and quick battle because I've already beaten it uh, oh, on hard mode. So there again. we go. We've got that for the day. And I go through and I want to make sure that I find all, um, there is, uh, several parts laying around here. I'm not going to do this on stream, but there will be glowy, glittery things around like this. And you want to go over, you want to find them and collect these because these can be a couple different things. In this case, this reward is more lost relics. This can be gems. This can be music. Um, but make sure you do find these. There are guides around that can show you where they're at. The I see right an way? easy pickings right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it so I don't have to go looking later and wondering where that one went. Uh, and this one is more lost relics. So do keep that. Make sure you keep track of your missions here. Um, I'll have to come back later and complete this to 100%. So make sure you are doing that. Make sure your challenges have been completed, things like that. You do want to keep up with that. Um, inside your mission pass here, you do want to make sure you're keeping track of that as well. Now we're going to go back to, because we do have the unique case here, we have two side stories. Guess what? You want to do this twice. So the same thing is, and this is a brand new function, came in this last patch because of this actually, is uh, come in and do your... Um, 
your clears here. I've got the 100% units on this one. Now, I should point out for you as a newer player, you will probably want to work on your challenge mode. Challenge modes are gonna give you battle data. This will help you get through the earlier game a little bit easier. Now, some of these are gonna get a little bit harder because this is more about a unit mechanic and also you have the worst one to deal with. I'm sorry for that. Um, so, let's see, we wanna get out of challenge stage, but do try to keep doing these. These do have a currency buildup and this will help earn you battle data along the way. I never do them, I'm swimming in battle data. Um, so we've done that, now it comes down to your arc. So inside your arc, you're gonna have a couple different daily things that you are gonna to want to do, and we're just gonna talk about them and not actually practice these. So for today, because it is uh, Saturday for me, all of my uh, tribe towers are open. Um, so I will be going through and clearing each one of these stages as far as I can go. Now, eventually you're gonna hit a wall where you cannot beat it, and that is fine. You will eventually, and this is disturbing, and this is why your wish list will come in so important later on, you will need to, um, you will need to make sure you um, pull some units for your tribe towers. It sounds really weird, but eventually you will want to climb these, and the reason you want to climb these is for this right here. I expect your these rewards to be well are planned. very, very good as you climb up. So that is 100 gems just for this one stage, core dust, and the manufacturer uh, molds right here, which will give you specifically uh, SSR manufacturers, and you do want to be clearing these as far as you can. Um, so this is where your one of your dailies will come from. Try to keep going up in the main tribe tower. Again, the same thing. Um, you will want to try to climb as high Virtual as you possibly can because of the rewards complete. up here. So tribe tower is something you want to do as well. Next, um, this is up to you on how you want to do it. Personally, I would say if you're a newer player, try to do your simulation room first. Reason being is because simulation room is going to give you your skill books. Now in my case, I can actually just go straight here to number 5C, begin simulation, and get all the rewards in one pass. Now, on stream you will see me consistently do this, and I've had a few people come in and go, you should be able to do this, you've been playing long enough. Yes, I know, do you realize that I'm doing this just to stall time? That's the only reason why I will walk up A, B, and C is just so I stall time and don't just click right through this because I only have this one account to really play on. So do your simulation room next because this way it will get you your skill books. Your skill stuff will help you level up your units because next up, your next thing you're gonna be wanting to focus on is interception. Interception is where you get your gear. Now, you have three processes you must do. First off, everybody starts to start out here on the train. I will do a short video on this at some point and tell you guys about the mechanics of this so that you can understand this a little bit better. But just understand, I will be egregiously overleveled and I'm going to detonate this thing. I will try to explain it as fast as I can when I do that. Next up, you're gonna come to the biggest literal block in the game for most players and it is um, Gravedigger. The level S Gravedigger is a unit check. This is not a skill check, this is not a gear check, it is a unit check. So by the time you reach this, you will need to have a lot of shotguns or some pretty serious firepower that unifies together, or else this is gonna be a lot harder. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys again here on this video, anytime I mention this, I am going to point this out, and this is major tinfoil hat stuff right here. I mean, we're talking aliens. Aliens, man. I mean, we're really going out there, all right? So put on your tinfoil hats with me and listen up. I'm gonna tell you this right now, that doing this on the PC is significantly easier than doing this on your mobile device for one reason. I am going out on a limb, and until the dev tells me that it's false, I will swear to you it's this is the case. On Gravedigger for this and the special version, Gravedigger is tracking your f actual finger input on your mobile device, people. 
Because as you move, notice the Gravedigger will move in the opposite direction as you move. I promise you, it's a percentage, it's not going to be massive where it's going to hard swing at equal movement, but notice, as you start moving, it's going to try to force the Gravedigger to move in the opposite direction you're pointing feedback in. The difference is, is this goes back to a massive callback to long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Sure, we could get into Duck Hunter, but I'm going to go up to PlayStation 1, where some of you, I swear, are old enough to know what that was. There was a game called Metal Gear Solid 1, and there was a specific stage where you had to use controller port number 2 to beat the boss. Why? Because it read your inputs. So if you were getting absolutely wrecked by this boss, you just plug it over into controller port number 2, and the boss had no clue what you're doing, and all of a sudden you're like, why was that really easy? It's because it's no longer tracking your inputs. And I promise you that here on the PC, it doesn't feel like it's doing that, because it is more random to me, and it's just keeping track with the mouse movement. So, with the mouse, it feels a lot easier to track the Gravedigger. It just comes down to making sure my shots are hitting where they need to go. But on the mobile device, it feels a lot harder going, moving it around, because it feels like I'm always fighting against its movement. Which would make sense, because the phone is designed to tell the game where your finger is moving. So there's a, probably a code in it that is telling you your finger, when I click here, push here, and it's telling the Gravedigger to move a small percentage in the opposite direction of your finger movement so that you constantly are playing Chase Gravedigger. So if you have access to a PC version and it will play, you'll notice a massive improvement here. But Gravedigger will be the next. Now, once you've finally cleared this, welcome to the big leagues. You finally are able to do special uh, individual uh, interceptions. Now, these are meant for the big leagues. You are going to be gear locked here because reasons. You've made it here by luck. You've made it here because of units. And you're gonna get wrecked. You're only gonna clear one of two. And you're gonna be like, or one of nine. You're gonna be like, I suck. No, it's, this is not meant for you to be beating this easily. This takes the right units. This takes the right gear. And this takes time. Why? Because here is where you're going to get the final end game gear. This is what you will be working towards is the T9 manufactured gear from your special interceptions. So, eventually, someday, you will be earning these. But for right now, even if you're clearing stage one, it is still better because you are earning at least eight of these boxes every day towards your 200. Yes, that really does stink, but guess what? It's better because you're at least getting some of this gear because this T8 gear or Tier 7 gear is going to help push you in a direction. I was going to say there should be Tier 8 in here. Um... But this tier, this, tier, this tier 7 and tier 8 gear is going to help push you into getting the tier 9 gear. So as you get there, this is just part of the process getting through this. This won't be easy, and especially the train. The train is going to screw you over. Everything else is going to be significantly easier than the train. All right, so now that you've done your special incursions, you've got your gear. Now the next thing I normally do is look at, okay, what's left? Typically, I've burnt through most of my things. You could, while you're here, go ahead and work on Lost Sectors if that's what you need to do. Do be working on these over time, but this is kind of an as-you-can type thing because you will kind of need some units and you're going to need some power on a lot of things. So at some point, you will start needing to have multiple teams ready to go, as I did today on stream. Uh, Sector X3 was a pain in the butt, but we did it. We definitely did it. Um, and it's just work towards that because that's resources that's going to help you get going. Now, the next thing you're going to want to uh, do is a couple, like, maintenance-like things. So, let's go to Outpost and take care of a few things in here because this is what you'll want to be doing. So, once we've kind of done that, we've done our big major daily things, the next thing we're going to want to do is come down to our bulletin board. If you have this unlocked, if you don't, this all depends on where you're at, but you want to make sure you keep your dispatches going. Um... Early on, as a new account, you're probably going to have to maybe micromanage this, but once you get a unit pool going, you literally just click operation. Dispatch All and it's going to do everything. Now, I've been leveling mine up, and that comes from the um, infrastructure core right here. This is how you get some of these progressions. You can see the chip info here. You will start way down at the bottom, and you'll be working your way up towards these higher chip levels. So, eventually, you'll get there to where you have the Dispatch list as mine, and it will you'll eventually be further than me. Um, next up, something you'll want to pay attention to is your Synchro Device, because Synchro Device is where you're going to be leveling, um, your units up. Make sure that you are, um, 
Make sure that the units, the five units, mine's gonna look a little different from a new player's. There is a different version. You'll have five up at the top where mine says enhance. Um, but you will want to make sure that those are getting leveled up, those five units. The reason that's important is because it's leveling everything below you. And that's what's gonna help you clear stages. So we're just gonna go ahead and move on. Um, but here, I also will say, since we talked about core dust, this is why it's gonna be so important. It's 10,000 per level for me. 10,000 per level, just think about that. Um, so make sure that you're leveling up your units. Uh, for new players, do come over to your Tactics Academy. This is highly important for you progressing in the game. And I'm sure I'll cover this again, but you will wanna make sure you are constantly rolling through your um, academy to level up your overall outpost. This is leveling up your uh, ability to get things. You're gonna have to go collect stuff in the stages. Um, there's a lot involved with this, but this is a definite resource dump and you may be going, wow, I really need this 900K to level up a unit or I need this 900K to level up a gear. You also need to make sure that you are leveling up this as well. So this sometimes will take priority over your units because getting those extra things will help you out in the long run. So as a new player, you'll wanna be doing that daily. Um, then you're gonna come over to the, um, in here to your advisements and do as many advisements as it says for the daily. Keep these going, work on your core team. Make sure that those units are getting um, experienced up because this is extra stats. These are free stats to your units as you level it up. So I will be gaining extra stats because I'm leveling up these friendships. So do keep them going. Um, this will require, I believe, two of the three limit breaks to get them to level 30. So the first 10 are free. Also come through here if you're a brand new player and collect all the gems. There is so many gems in this thing. If you haven't been doing this, there's a ton here. So do these, again, focus on your main teams. Anytime you get a limit break on a unit, go back and check and see if they can be done. Um, Lost Relics will be something you'll be claiming from inside of story mode, so do keep an eye on these. A lot of currency could be sitting in here when you need it. So we've taken care of that. Now we need to talk about one last thing, um, which is inside, an easy way of getting it is inside here, is liberation. So once you get to this point in the game and this is unlocked, this probably won't be available right away, but this is, I know this is a little bit earlier in the game. Now mine is on Nihilister. Nihilister is the uh, free pilgrim you get, but you have to beat level 21 or 2031 uh, in the story. So. Um, Nihilister is the other burst two currently in the game. I'm working on it. Um, and you want to come through daily and make sure you are working on this. Now, I'm going to have to skip this, unfortunately, because, um, I will have to come back and read this later. But, um, in short, this is part of your, um... This is part of the grind here. And when I finish and I get to 5,400, Nihilister is mine. So I'm gonna tell you how I go about this and you, your mileage may vary. And I mean, I get it. Whales are gonna give you a different advice. You're gonna have the super min max be like, no, no, he's wrong. No, listen, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't, I promise you. What I do is if I'm kind of semi pushing this i will do one refresh on every single one of these after i claim it you can get up to six a day if i am hardcore pushing for like that last like maybe 200 300 you know points i might refresh a little bit further to try to get all golds just to speed it up a little bit but it doesn't matter i'm gonna tell i'm gonna be real with you it doesn't matter you get them when you get them now, in the case of a lot of people pulling 2B, your Quincy version, I'm gonna understand you guys wanting to rush it, but just be patient because we don't know what the next unit will be. That may replace, or you summon Mast and you don't need Quincy anymore. Um, but you'll still wanna get her just because it's a good unit to have. But you get what I'm saying is there might be something else coming along the way that may end up being better than Mast, better than Novel, we don't know. It's always the next two weeks could tell us something completely different. Just like with Nihilister, I could go through all this and the big slap in the face is, guess what, anniversary, congratulations. Here is a insanely overpowered burst two unit, Pilgrim, and I'm going, crap, I just got Nihilister, one of the worst Pilgrims in the game. Literally, only reason she's better is because she's a burst two. So make sure you take care of this. Um, 
then it comes down to the remaining what is left. Now there's a few things left in your dailies that you will want to take care of depending on where you're at. So you'll have recruitment. Now recruitment comes down to this. When I normally need this, whether it be for summon X units in the uh, liberation, I come here to friendship summons and I will get this off. I'll also save my friendship summons to give me the two guaranteed multis a week. So I'll save this up and I won't be burning this often and I'll only burn these at the beginning and once during the, uh, try to build, burn this once right after reset and once in the middle of reset and then save it up for the next week. Um, just because it helps me from not having to consistently burn summons. So the next thing that you will have, the, one of the final like things you'll end up needing to do is come over to a unit, whatever you're working on. I'm gonna give you guys a little tip here. So sometimes you will see things that say level up, like you'll get a quest that says level up three times. Here's how you get around that. One summon, like one currency, upgrade. That's upgrade number one. Upgrade number two. Upgrade number three. Upgrade number four. And then just because I do one full level a day, there you go, that is my level for the day. And I am working on this piece. Now, if I have a bunch of currency, I might just full slap, smash this, but I don't because I'm also trying to save up for um, Burst Weekend. That will be coming up next weekend for us in the game currently. And I want to have as much currency ready in case I do get some pieces that I do really need to push up for my units. Now, as you can see, some of my gear looks a little different from you. This is called overload gear. This is in-game stuff. You don't have to worry about this right now. But this is eventually going to be what your units will end up working towards. So I do that. I level it up. And now it kind of comes down to the long-term gameplay stuff. This is now where you go and you work on story mode, you work on your hard mode. Um, something I will give you as just advice here, I'll probably say it again somewhere else. Um, for me, I save EX stages like a uh, trust fund. What this is, is the day that I really, really, really need the currency, I'm gonna come back through all my EX stages and burn them someday when there is a unit that's like, Oh my gosh, I so desperately need this unit. I need every summon I can possibly get. I'm low, they released this, this was great, but this is even better. I'm saving all my EX stages as that trust fund. Is it the smart thing to do? No, probably not. But to me, it feels like a reserve currency because these things are worth for a decent Swimming chunk sure of money. Let me move away and click up on one of these is and I'll take you the over right one way? just so you can see it. But it would be working on your normal story stages, making sure you get where you see the little magnifying glass way up there, that little orange ping. Make sure those are getting maxed out on every single one of your story stages. It is really, really important because that is also free currency uh, and lore if you want to read it. But if you look right here, this is a reward of 300 gems just for beating this. So if you think about that, that's 300 gems that's over 20 stages. Work. Some of them are worth 500. I believe the uh, EX ones are worth more. But that's a lot of currency just getting Roger. stored up for no reason. I feel like we're so, gonna hit the jackpot with um, these guys. Think about it like that, as save that for a rainy day. Now as a new player, you're probably gonna be like, I'm currency starved. Not yet. That's not what we're really talking about. It could be for some of you. Shall we roll but the dice? Um, think about this more as a later game sure trust. Fund. The way is what I'm looking at. You know, we're in the you know, we're in like the 18 to like the twenties. That's probably the point where we've burnt a lot of stuff and we're going, okay, it's time. So work on story mode, do things like that. That would be part of the daily routine. Um, check your levels, check that stage. You know, in this case, I am, I'm waiting on skill books. I'm waiting on, like for me, in my, in my checkup daily, it's I come over and I make sure I check the skills since I'm working on 2B specifically. Her skill two uh, is what I'm looking for. I go, okay, I got 120. I know I'm only gonna get X amount today, but it's just making sure I stay on top of this so that I know, oh, hey, it's time to activate and level up this next skill. Stay on top of the skills on your important units. Some units you will not need to level up. Some you only need to level up to four to get the major use out of them in the beginning just to get going because there's gonna be other big power creeps. So that is going to cover the pretty much the daily routine that I go through day in, day out. Now, obviously I haven't done everything here, um, but this is what I do and how I process this information. Again, just make sure you collect all your rewards, all your daily stuff, because this is free currency and this is stuff that builds towards. I mean, that's 50 core dust I didn't have to work for. So, um, 
if you guys have any questions about your daily routine or if I've missed something, you can point it out in the comments and I'll be like, yep, I totally forgot. I thought I went through the checklist. I should have written everything down, but I didn't this time because I'm trying to do this very, very quickly because I want to try to squeeze one more video in before I go to bed tonight. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out. Pop in on stream if I am live. Even if I'm not playing Nikkei, just say, hey, I came from YouTube. I want to ask you a Nikkei question. I'll be like, okay, cool. Unless I'm like seriously focused in on something, I might be like, hey, give me a minute and I'll, I'll get to it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my daily routine in a nutshell. We're going to leave it here on Noir and Blanc's lovely uh, animated uh, portrait here. Um, so yeah, you guys take care and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.